Good morning or afternoon or evening, everyone. We're going to give it a couple more minutes here and uh, wait for everyone to get logged in. I appreciate everyone taking the time to join us. I know we are wonderfully connecting from all over the world and in very different time zones and different spaces. And if, if all my presenters, my colleagues here at the University of Finley, if you can put yourself on mute um, so we don't have cross noise, I'd appreciate it. A couple more minutes. Looks like we have a great turnout here today. That's wonderful. Well, I want to go ahead and officially get started. I want to welcome everyone and thank everyone for taking the time to, to log in with us and join us here at the University of Finley. Um, a, a little bit of a housekeeping. Um, my name is Rebecca Jenkins. I know I have talked with many of you. All of you I've had quite a bit of email back and forth with. A lot of you have had the chance of talking to in person. Um, but for the sake of today, I've got a bit of a presentation to give, but I do want to leave plenty of time for question and answers. I've got my entire admissions team here as well. Um, these names that you see across the screen with Debbie, Suzanne, Toto, and Tony, I'm sure they're familiar to you. And so they're here to answer your questions as well. I do ask that for your questions, you put them into the Q&A here at the bottom of your screen um, or the side, depending on if you're on a phone or on your laptop. Um, don't use the chat. It's a little bit harder for us to keep track of that, but we do want to make sure we get to everyone's questions. And if we can't get them all answered, I will follow up with you afterwards. But I've got, you know, we've got about an hour here this morning. We may or may not need the whole time. Um, but with that, it looks like we're starting to slow down on our attendees. I'm, we have quite a few folks joining us. I'm very, very happy to see that. Um, so I want to go ahead and get started. Um, and see if I can do this. I'll share my screen, <laughs> see how successful I, I am at this. Sometimes I can get it first time, sometimes I do not. Okay, so everybody, I'm guessing everybody should be seeing my screen. Okay. Now, for those of you that are familiar, I'm gonna re real quick review a little bit about the University of Finley. I know many of you are. Um, already familiar with the university, but just to make sure everybody is on the same page. And then I want to review what our response is, how, co how the COVID pandemic has been affecting the United States and specifically Ohio, since the United States is so large, it is a little bit different depending on where you're at in the United States and how you're being impacted. And then I want to talk through some of our programs that we know are of uh, great interest to um, our students, especially in this era of having to consider is online going to be a good option or not. And then we want to review our application process and our English test requirements and kind of go through all that. So that'll be our format for this morning's presentation. Um, but this picture I always like, it is a overview of the University of Finley picture. It's a nice aerial shot. This gives you an idea of where we are and what, it, what the landscape looks like here. Um, we are in a very, you know, the United States in a lot of places is very green. It's a very green, healthy part of the United States. You can see our landscape's a bit flat. Um, so we're not near any particular mountains or anything like that. Um, but it is that you can see our campus that it is pretty good size. It stretches all the way back there. Um, it's a beautiful traditional college campus located in a smaller city in the Midwest. Um, there we go, figure out. Just as a quick overview of the University of Finley at a glance, we have about 4,000 students. Um, so we're not really big, but we're not tiny. So there's a lot of opportunities. I think that's a really nice sweet spot for us to be in. Um, we have a lot of undergraduate programs. Um, we have about 84, 85 bachelor's degrees. About the only undergraduate program we don't have is engineering. So about everything else we do, we are very heavy in our sciences and we are very heavy in health professions. But we are a traditional liberal arts foundation university, which means we have education, business, and all the fine arts as well. Um, we have 11 master's degrees and four doctoral degrees. And uh, a lot of those master's degrees are some that are particularly attractive to our international students. One thing that being a campus this size allows us to have is smaller classes. We have a really strong student to faculty ratio. And one thing with that student to faculty ratio, our classes are taught by faculty members. They are not taught by teaching assistants. 
Um, you, um, generally, there's a couple of the English classes that might be, but your students will learn from the professor and not from a teaching assistant. Um, the, our, um, we have students that live on campus, about 1,200 students live on campus, and we can talk a little bit more about options for international students with on-campus housing later. Um, we are a division two university. So when it comes to athletics, we do give athletic scholarships. So if you have international students who have a particular athletic interest and they're particularly good, we can work to, to get them time with the coach to have them send them a tape of their, of their performance. And so it, it is a nice, a nice selling point for the university for a lot of students because a lot of our student athletes, especially international student athletes, they get the athletic scholarship and then they also get an additional academic scholarship. Toto here, our, one of our international recruiters was actually came to us as a student athlete from Germany. Um, so what's nice is there's a lot of options there for our students. I know national rankings is really important. I'm sure your families ask about it. They wanna know that they're sending their child or that they themselves are going to a reputable university. University of Finley has been here since 1882. So we are certainly a long-standing university. We are heading, heading towards our 140th year anniversary. Um, and so we are um, ranked by US News and World Report, the Wall Street Journal, um, Princeton Review, Money Magazine. We are actually ranked 240th in the United States, which we'd love to be in the top 100, but for a university our size, um, we to be nationally ranked is actually, I think, pretty, pretty strong for us. Um, we are we are a faith-based university. We are a Christian university, so we are actually the number one Church of God school in the United States. With that said, if you or if your students or their families, if they are not Christian or faith is not important to them, it is not a forced part of the curriculum here. That is not something that they will feel out of place. We welcome students from all backgrounds and all religions. And actually it's, it's a big pride point for us that we have students that come from all backgrounds and all religions here at the university, because it is very important that we prepare our students to be great citizens of the world and not just stay in their own little bubble of what their cultural understanding is. Um, our, I mentioned that we have some really strong health professions programs. Our health informatics program is the number one online health, health informatics program in the United States, and I can talk more about that one. Our occupational and our physical therapy program, I need to update my slide, are actually ranked top 100 in the United States. So you can see that we are a very substantial, reputable university here. Um, I always like this, this graph because it gives you an idea of where we are at in the United States. We are in the Midwest. We are in Ohio. We're actually in Northwest Ohio. We are about an hour from Toledo, two hours from Columbus, two hours from Detroit. We're that nice in between. Um, it's a, we're a decent sized city ourselves, but we're, really, we're a really easy drive to some major cities. And in this era of COVID-19, I actually am grateful that we are not in a giant population center. I think that's helped us quite a bit um, manage through this COVID crisis. And so with that, I know many of you have questions. That's one reason that prompted me to do this webinar about how, how are we doing <clears throat> in the era of COVID? What is going on here in the United States? I know you guys hear many things of what is and perhaps is not going on. Um, so I want to take a chance and to talk through that and I will have time for questions on it afterwards. Um, for here in the United States and Ohio, the United States is starting to open back up. There are many, many states that are opening back up. This week is kind of the big week that a lot of things are opening back up. We were just talking here in the office this morning that our restaurants are starting to open back up and our shopping mall is opening back up today. And so it'll be a big uh, influx of a lot of people going out and, and uh, wanting to go out and, and shop and, and do all that again. So we're really excited about that. Um, in Ohio and specifically in our part of the state, the infection rate's actually been really low. I don't think we've had a new case of COVID-19 in our area in a week. So we, we, you know, we closed down like everybody else did. Everybody went and worked remote, but we have largely been, stayed very healthy and I pray that it stays that way. Um, our employees are starting to come back in the office. You can see that all of us are in the office again, which is really nice, as nice as it was to work from home for a bit. I, uh, I was ready to come back. Um, we are, our classes this summer are online. We do have online classes this summer and that includes an online IELP program, um, our English language program. And that actually be begins classes here in a couple of weeks. And so if you have students 
Uh, the nice thing with offering it this way is if you have students who know they want to come to the United States in the fall, but they want to get the English language requirement out of the way, or they want to um, advance their English, they can do this in a shorter program over the summer. It's an eight-week program this summer, and they can jump up a level um, as part of being in this program and, and have it be enrolled online. And then when they come here or they go to another university, they've already got, they've already had a chance to get that done. It's a little bit cheaper to do it this way. It is certainly faster to do it this way. So if you've got students that are specifically interested in doing the online IELP, I do encourage you after this to follow up with myself or have the students follow up with their admissions counselor. And so for fall, this is the big question we're getting is, you know, what are we doing this fall? Um, there's a number of things that we are doing this fall. First and foremost, we are, we are preparing to deliver in-person instruction for the academic year. I know I've had a couple of, a couple of my recruiting partners reach out and say that they heard that all universities in the United States are closed till January. That is not the case. Um, it is not the case right now. And um, I certainly hope that that will not be the case in the future, but um, all, a lot of us, a lot of our universities right here in Ohio, I've been being saying that they are planning to be open in the fall, just like we are. Um, with that said, I'm sure we're going to have to make some adjustments based on what our um, state guidelines and our public health officials say is safe, do, we need to do to keep our students safe. Um, right now, we are, as a team, practicing social distancing, and if we have to be in a meeting with big groups of people, we're wearing masks, that sort of thing. So we do, I do anticipate that that's going to be part of what fall could look like for us, um, but we are planning to have in-person instruction and, um, and have that, that experience that our students love and really, really want for the fall. So, but again, we will follow what the state tells us what is safe to do. And so some things that we are doing to get ready for fall, and I know that with um, universities being closed and schools being closed and banks being closed and the testing centers being closed, that has made a lot of things stressful and trying to get things kind of crammed into a short period of time for a lot of our potential students. There's a number of things that we are doing to help make this a little bit easier for your students and for yourselves. One thing that we have started to do is we are happy to email I-20s to you. Um, the students need to be admitted. We need to have all the financial documents just like normal to be able to email them. But um, if that helps expedite getting that visa appointment as visa offices open up or if because they're still on quarantine and getting to get their mail picked up is a little bit of a challenge, we are happy to email the I-20s. Um, you just need to have the students contact their admissions counselor or email our international at finley.edu email address and say, um, hey, I'd like the students I-20 emailed. Or you can always just reach out to me or Suzanne or Debbie directly and ask for it. But we do, they need to have all the same financial documents as regular. Um, we are continuing to mail I-20s just like we normally would be mailing I-20s. Um, again, to mail the I-20, the students have to be admitted. We've got to have their financial documents. And then we do have them pay the e-ship fee, which I think, is, which is pretty standard. Um, to have the I-20 mailed. And that is something that once they're admitted um, and we have all the information, they'll get an email from Suzanne that has that information on how they can email their I-20s um, or how they can pay the e-ship so we can mail them the I-20s. Another thing that we started doing here about a month ago is I know that I'm um, getting the English language testing scores. A lot of the testing centers were closed. So we are accepting Duolingo now for English language test scores. You can see the score there for undergraduate students that minimum score is 95, for graduate it's 105 for a Duolingo score. And so we are officially a Duolingo school as well. So we do ask if your students are taking Duolingo that they put us in when they go and take the test as a school to automatically get the test scores. Um, orientation, this is one that come August, I, I'm a little worried that we're going to be up against some time crunches for folks, depending on when visa office is open, when they get all the documents. And so we do start classes that first Monday, um, that August, ooh, I was just looking at that. We do start class, I think it's like August 18th, it's that Monday. So I know that there might be a time crunch for some folks. So because of that, we are going to run a virtual orientation on August 7th. And we will send out more information about all of that um, as we get a little bit closer to it. So with that virtual orientation, we're going to have it so students can get registered for their classes, that they can go through all of the um, information that we give during orientation, getting acclimated with community, um, all of those things that we normally do during orientation. We're gonna do that in a virtual fashion. 
Um, that way, when they do arrive, say it's a little bit after the entry point actually starts, they're still signed up and they're, and they're ready to go. But we will also continue to do an in-person orientation, which is our traditional orientation we do August 12th to the 15th. And during this time, that includes um, a lot of fun campus activities. We have a meet with their advisor. They get signed up for classes. They do a little bit of testing. All those things, just like we've run it in the past. So ideally, students should arrive on campus by Tuesday, August 11th. Um, we do do airport pickup. We are happy to pick up. We recommend students coming into the, either the Detroit or the Columbus airport. It's really about the same distance. Most of our students come into the Detroit airport. Um, we just ask that uh, you give us a little bit of a heads up or they give us a little bit of a heads up of when they're coming. We do like to have their flight information if they want a period, if they want an airport pickup. We do need a little bit of time since it is about an hour and a half drive for us to go get them so we can plan for it. We had a student um, come in in the spring that we knew was coming, but we had not been able to get a hold of them to find out when and here to find out um, they were in the air and we had about four hours notice that they were going to be landing in Detroit and they were coming from Iran. So I do ask for more than four hours notice on when students are coming, but we will certainly do our best to do to pick up the students at the airport. And again, if we have students that are going to be arriving late because they couldn't get their documents in time or with flights, we know that flights are going to be a little tricky. Um, that we will work with students individually to get them signed up for classes to have them work with the faculty and then as far as pick up. So we're just going to have to play this by ear a little bit because like you guys know, there's so much uncertainty still going on, but we're going to do our absolute best to be accommodating and make sure that everyone who is wants to come and is excited to come here is able to do that. Um, so on campus housing, we, we will continue to have on campus housing this fall and there's a lot of off campus housing available just like there always is. Um, we will also continue to have our welcome houses for newly arriving students. For those of you guys that aren't familiar with this, we do have um, welcome houses for them so they don't have to know where they're living right when they come. Our international students are not required to live on campus at any point in time. I do recommend that if you have students that are that they're, you know, they're undergraduate students, they're right from their parents' homes, they're 17, 18, 19, and this is their first time away from home, I really do recommend they live on campus at least the first year. They do so much better, they get acclimated to the community, to, they make friends quicker, all those wonderful things that come with living on campus. Um, but there are, there are many opportunities for off-campus living. With the Welcome Houses, we will follow the safety guidelines and social distancing and cleaning that, that, will, that, are, that are, we've already put in place and the ones that We'll have, I'm sure, updated guidelines by August for what is what is appropriate for that. And so we'll follow all that, but we're going to continue to offer those for our students. And those are $20 a night and they can stay up to 10 days. Sometimes students stay less, sometimes they stay more. We have graduate assistants that, that are there to help them as well. So if they come, they can help advise them on where to rent, where to live. They all seem to know where the best apartments are. They're the cheapest um, for them to stay in. So we will continue to provide all of that with appropriate safety guidelines in place. Um, so going over some of our academic programs, I know many of you are familiar with them, but there's a couple I specifically want to call attention to in this era of COVID. Um, overall, uh, you know, we've, I mentioned that we've got a lot of academic programs. The ones that tend to be most popular for international students are environmental health and safety and sustainability program. This is both an undergraduate and a graduate program, and I'm going to talk about the graduate program a little bit more. Um, I tell you what, this is a great degree. These students, they, they graduate at the undergrad level with a four-year applied science degree. They have two or three well-paying internships as they're here. It is a STEM program, so they would be able to get STEM OPT for it. And then when they graduate, they always have many job offers. We actually have many employers that want, we can't get enough students in this program to meet the demand that we have for employers. We have a lot of partnerships with employers that are looking for people in this field. Um, and I make the joke, but I'm not really joking that if I had it all to do over again, I would, and if I was better at science, I'd probably go into this field because of the, because of how, how in demand it is and how, how, um, how much money our graduates make right out of the gate. Um, the MBA program is always very, very strong for us for international students. Our computer science program, this is one that we all know is huge and is bigger now than it's ever going to be or ever has been. Uh, we have both an undergraduate and a graduate program in computer science and applied analytics. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about our, under, about our graduate program in a minute. Um, pharmacy, the PharmD degree. We have a six year PharmD program that students can enroll both in as a 
first time freshmen and they can get in at zero at year six at the first year and go all the way through or they can come into the professional phase and it would be a four-year program for them if they would come into the professional phase so if you have uh, students who perhaps they've been, um, India is one that tends to come to mind, perhaps they've been a pharmacist in India and they want to go back and get a PharmD, they would come into the four-year professional program, not start, not have to start all the way over at the, at the um, entry point at the year zero. Education is one that's always very popular for international students. Health informatics, this is a graduate program I talk a little bit more about. Exercise science is one that we're starting to see more and more interest in um, from our international student population. This program is really nice because it prepares you for working in the healthcare side of the sports industry. And then we have a master's in athletic training that our students tend to go right from the undergraduate exercise science program into the graduate master's of athletic training program. Um, but if you have students that want to go in sports and sports management, I know right now all of that's kind of in limbo with COVID, but if it's a passion for them, and, but they don't want to go into the healthcare side of it, they want to go into the business side of it, we do have a sports management business program. So that would be the people that get to work in the front office and manage the business of sports versus the ones that are working as a trainer. That would be the exercise science program. Um, business, we have strong undergraduate business programs. Um, and there's a number of concentrations in that. Accounting, um, operations and logistics, the sports management, marketing, um, all those business management, all those general business areas. And then nuclear medicine and sonography is another program that's really strong for us for international students. We have a lot of health professions programs here at the University of Finley. There's 17 different health professions program. Um, and so if you've got someone that's interested in health professions, but they're not really sure what, they really should look at us. We've got nursing as well, but nuclear medicine sonography tends to be where a lot of our international students um, pursue those degrees. For a number of our online programs, so right now <laughs> with COVID-19, everyone's not really sure what, um, what they're going to be able to do come fall. So some options out there. We have four graduate programs that tend to be very popular for international students, period, that are offered both online and in person. It is the exact same program, whether it's offered online or it's in person. It's taught by the exact same faculty. It's the exact same courses and the same curriculum. So what's nice about these options, and I'm going to go through them each, is with those programs, a student could start the program in fall semester, take a couple classes online from their home country, if visa allows and all those other things, and then come here in the spring and then finish the program and be in person. They would not be behind. It is the same, it's the same classes in the same curriculum. Um, so that might be an option for some of your students that are considering it. So with the Masters of Environmental Health and Safety, it's a two-year program. It's fully accredited. It's one of the only, it's one of the only nine of the program in the United States accredited by EHAC for environmental health and safety management. Again, I mentioned this is very high demand, very easy to get employed after graduation. It is a STEM program, so they would be able to get that three-year OPT. Um, cost for this program is about 24,500. That's over the course of the program, so that's not, that's not an upfront cost. That's the course of the two years, so it depends on how many classes they're taking. Um, that would, um, what their actual bill each semester would be. And so the, with this program, there are scholarships available. All of our graduate programs, there are scholarships available for them. Um, another program I wanted to, just to talk about a little bit is our Masters of Science in Health Informatics. This is, I mentioned, it's the number one health informatics online program in the United States. And again, this program, it's the same program, same faculty, whether it's taught online or, or on the ground. Like these programs have always been online. A lot of our domestic students actually take these programs online. Um, it's, it's a format that uh, most people in the United States are a little bit more used to. So a lot of, a lot of the programs are, have been online for many years. Again, it's a two-year program. It's fully accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Um, this is the program that uh, using health informatics and technology to help drive healthcare delivery and to ease how that is, how, to ease how healthcare is, is delivered. And so again, in, <laughs> it's another one of these technology programs in this era of COVID-19. This is really gonna become a highly in demand program because hospitals and healthcare providers are gonna need more and more people that know how to make their, um, their computers run, that know how to get their electronic health me medical records and get information transferred back and forth between hospitals and providers. And so this is going to, it's always been an in-demand program and I really look to see the demand for this program exponentially increase um, in 
this post COVID-19 era that we're going to be in. Um, and so this program is a little bit more expensive than the um, Masters of Environmental. It's about 27,000. And again, that's over the course of the two year program. And there's scholarships available for this one as well. Um, this is another one that is huge for us. And I've had many questions about it. It's our Masters of Science in Applied Security and Analytics. Um, this is a two year program. It is the same program, whether it's offered on the ground or in person. And this is that cybersecurity and big data program. <laughs> We, we all need to get better at this. So this is going to be, uh, this is a huge program for, for employability. And again, it's a STEM program. So they'd be able to get that three year OPT. And you can see here what the different courses they take in it. It gives you an idea of how well-rounded of a applied security and analytics professional um, that they would be once they complete the program. And this program, like our other technology programs, a little bit more expensive. It's about 27,000 um, over the course of the whole program. And again, there's scholarships available for this one as well. Um, oh, I got my title wrong here. This is for the MBA, oops, sorry. This is for the MBA program. Pay no attention to, to that applied securities. I was updating stuff here quickly. This is our MBA program. We're one of the top online MBA programs in Ohio. And again, I, I stress this because we have run these programs online or, or in person for many years. This is a one to two year program. So if you have a student that really is dedicated and wants to uh, front load those classes, they could get done in one, one and a half years. Um, and uh, some of our uh, domestic students push it and try and get done that quickly. Um, this is fully, it's a fully accredited program by the ACBSP. Um, this program has a couple different concentrations in it. It's got a healthcare management concentration, which is going to be very popular. Our um, certified public accountant, our certified managerial accountant concentration in it. Um, they can also pick up concentrations in finance, marketing, international business, human resources management. Um, it's really a nice program for us that uh, we've had many, many international students in this program over the years. This one's a little bit cheaper than the technology programs. This one's about 23,000 over the course of the whole program. And again, there's scholarships available for this program. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about the city of Finley. Um, so we switch gears here a little bit. I think this is important specifically now if you've got families that are unsure. I know there's many things that are said about what's going on in the United States and what our president is or is not saying. So I always like to kind of talk about the community that the, that the students are going to be living in. We, the, we are in the city of Finley. The University of Finley is in the city of Finley. That's our, that is our namesake. Um, we are the number one micropolitan community in the United States. And that's a weird word, micropolitan. Um, what that means is we are the top small city in the United States. Um, it is, and the, that ranking, I think we are six years in a row that we have been named the top small city in the United States. And that is named for a number of reasons. It is a safe city. It is a clean city. Um, it's about 41,000 people. There's about 70,000 people in the region, um, but within the city limits, it's about 41,000. So there's certainly a lot to do here. It's not super tiny, um, but there, it's small enough that, especially if you've got some younger students, that they will feel safe here at the University of Finley. The cost of living is wonderfully low here. Um, so I always like this comparison. If you compare a salary of $124,000 a year to in New York City, it's compared to about a $50,000 a year salary in Finley. You can have the same economic status, the same living arrangements and that sort of thing and have a wonderful I feel like a wonderful productive life for about $50,000 a year here versus what it would take for that sort of thing in New York City. And, and again, with post COVID, we are not a heavy, densely populated area. I think that's been one reason that we've been able to, to stay pretty low in our number of cases. Um, economics, the city of Finley is actually pretty affluent. There's a lot of jobs in town. There's a lot of big businesses in town. Um, that are located here. We have a lot of, we have a number of international businesses that are located here. There's shopping, it's, there's a lot of cool stuff to do. And that's, that, those are all the reasons why we, we have been ranked the top small state in the United States so many years in a row. Um, one thing I always like to point out to everybody that's important, um, the weather. We are in Northwest Ohio. We have all four seasons. The summers are hot, the winters are cold, and there's snow on the ground, and spring and fall is beautiful. So it is something that sometimes we have international students that get here and they're surprised when it gets really hot or they're surprised when there's snow on the ground. So the wonderful thing about that is you get to experience all four seasons. You get to see the, the trees change and the flowers come out 
and uh, hot summers and, and going out to the lake and doing all the swimming, all that fun thing and building snowmen and snowball fights in the winter. So um, just something I always like to make sure people are clear on. Tuition and scholarships. This is something that we get lots of questions on. We are a private university. And so with that, our tuition, you know, we have high touch, a lot of opportunities for students, a lot of engagement points, a lot of, a lot of things that are built into the cost of tuition, free tutoring, free parking, wonderful rec center, all these things. So you can see there our tuition, um, housing and meal plans, another 10,000 a year. And we'll talk about scholarships in a little bit. Um, however, international students are not required to live on campus. So living off campus, you'll, it's only like you figure your housings and meals off campus, it would be about 5,000. So you can save a little bit of money there. Um, scholarships. We do offer really robust scholarships for our undergraduate and, and for our graduate students. So if you have a high achieving student who and our scholarships are, are issued automatically and they're based on GPA, they go up to 18,000 a year for undergraduate students. And then um, you can see for under for graduate students, everyone automatically gets a thousand dollar scholarship. If they're the MBA, the environmental program, it's an additional, it's a, a two thousand dollar scholarship. Um, but if they take the ACT or SAT and they get a good score, they can get an additional 4,000 a year. And that goes down a little bit. And the same thing for the GRE and the GMAT, they can get an additional $1,000. Now we have these scholarships because we don't require students to take the ACT, SAT or GRE or GMAT for any of our programs. We do, however, encourage it. Um, it gives us a little bit better idea of the type of student they are. So to encourage it, we offer additional scholarships for taking it. So if they've taken it or they're thinking about taking it, I really encourage it because if not, they're leaving money on the table. Um, but a, another thing that we are doing in the era of COVID is I know money is a concern for everyone. So if you have students that they get their scholarship package, they know, they know what they qualify for. If Finley is their top choice, if they're really interested in coming to the University of Finley, but they're looking at their scholarship program, whether they're a grad student or undergrad student, and they're feeling like, hey, you know, I got a little bit better offer from another school, or I just can't afford that, but I really want, um, I really, really want to come to Finley. I encourage you guys to reach back out to Suzanne. We have what we're calling um, a Finley first uh, repackaging effort. So the mentality is I don't want to lose a potential great student who's a high achieving student here at the University of Finley. I don't want to lose them over a couple thousand dollars. So if you've got students that you think could be a great fit and um, and they're passionate and you know their family is behind them and they really want to come here to Finley, let us know. Reach back out to Suzanne Recker and we can go to our vice president and see about seeing if we can get them a little bit of additional scholarship dollars. Now with that said, I want to stress that these are for students that they're really sold on Finley. If they're just looking for the absolute best deal or they're, they're not really sure where they want to go and they're not as good of a high achieving student, they may not be someone that, that we would put forth for a repackaging. So we really want to make sure we have the best students here. And if getting the best students means a couple thousand dollars more in scholarship, I am happy to do that. Um, and I'm sure there'll be more questions about that. Um, and so with that, at the application criteria, Suzanne, if you want to pop on, this is your area of expertise and can review this a little bit for our partners here. Hello, everyone. Um, this is the undergraduate application documents that we require. We require them to provide their high school transcript and depending on what country they're from, um, their school leaving certificates or their diplomas. I just would like to stress for you that when you're uploading these documents that they do need to be scanned copies of their original documents. We cannot take any true copies or attested copies or um, anything like that. The undergraduate students do need to provide an English test score, um, not to be have your application process, but in order to be accepted and have your I-20 issued, which shows which ones we accept. And also like Rebecca had mentioned earlier, we do um, now accept the Duolingo and it is a 95 is what the minimum is for undergraduate applicants. We would like you to have your passport photo page uploaded and also a bank statement um, showing funds for at least the first year of studies. And if you have questions about how much that would be, you can email myself or your admissions counselor. Um, the SAT and ACT is not required, but there are additional scholarships. So if you have students that have taken them, please have them um, send them to me or upload them to their application. Um, and we can see if there's additional monies that they can get for that. Okay. 
and then the graduate application documents. Um, it, it, regardless if the student has a bachelor's degree or master's degree, we base the admission decision off of their bachelor's degree uh, credentials. So they will need to upload their transcripts and their degree certificate or their diploma. And again, I just want to stress to you that these have to be scanned copies of their original documents. Um, unfortunately, we can't accept true copies or um, notarized copies or attested documents. So please make sure when uploading them, they are in their original documents. If you scan in their original documents with all the other requirements, we can get an admission decision in approximately 48 hours um, for your students. So we can, we have a pretty quick turnaround. Um, English test score, it shows on the screen. And again, we've added the Duolingo, which is a minimum of 105. Uh, the passport photo page needs to be uploaded and their bank statement. Um, the GRE and GMAT, if they've taken it, please let us know for additional scholarship monies. And I know I did see a question come through. We do accept three-year bachelor's degrees from um, India, Pakistan, and Nepal. So that is, we do accept those. Very good. Um, a little bit about our application. It is an online application. And so I encourage you as recruiting partners, if you have not gone in and, and looked at the application yourself, it is worth it going in, create an account, um, playing around with the application a little bit just to get comfortable with it. So as you're advising students or perhaps you're sitting with them and helping them fill it out themselves that you're comfortable with it. One thing I always like to point out for our recruiting partners, um, with the application, you can see this section here that says additional information. This is where you can put in your agent information. So whether it's the students doing it or you doing it, um, if you have a signed contract with the University of Finley, your agent name should be um, in this drop down here. If you're a brand new agent or perhaps um, we have a contract that's expired, but you're sending students, all of that is perfectly fine. We encourage you to do that all as the same. You go ahead and put, this is an open text box here, go ahead and put the advisor's name and the agent email in this as well. And that's how we keep track of our agents that have sent us students. And so when it comes to paying commission, that's the first thing I look at to making sure with commission um, that, that we, are, we are appropriately rewarding our agents who have been really good partners with that, with us. Um, and with that, I know that we've got some questions coming in. So I do wanna open it up for question and answer at this point. Um, I, I hope that this has been helpful so far. And I see that we answered the three-year three -year degree one. Um, is the MBA program STEM approved? Debbie, you wanna take that one? Uh, unfortunately, no, our MBA is not STEM approved. Um, as Rebecca mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation, though, several of our graduate programs are for the environmental, the health informatics, and the, the uh, analytics is also STEM approved. But unfortunately, at this time, our MBA is not. Good, good. Um, another question, and again, you guys put your questions into the Q&A here at the bottom of your screen, you should see it. Question is, what if a student has not got a visa slot? Can a student get an extension if situation gets normal? Debbie, that's yours too. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're fully aware that, um, that fall is definitely gonna be challenging um, depending on when um, the embassies open up, it, it could be crazy busy and it's gonna put some delays in there. Um, we, we won't, most likely, we have allowed extensions in the past for some late arrivals. Um, that'll be discussed uh, with each program uh, closer to the start of the, of the school year in the fall. And um, it, we'll definitely be able to probably more and more on a case-by-case -case basis um, and, and see how that goes. Uh, if, it, if it turns out that you're just able, not able to get here for the fall, then we can definitely defer that admission to the, to the spring semester in January. Good. Yep, an extension and orientation is another, this is another question about COVID-19. Can I look for an extension and orientation might not allow for air travel from India? Yes, this is another one. We are absolutely gonna work with everyone on a case by case basis. We know that flights are gonna be a little tricky, visa appointments getting that little bit late. So just, I just ask that if you, if you yourself or you've got students, please just let us know what's going on. Let us know what's going on with that student. We will work with them on a case by case basis. For orientation, we're gonna do that virtual orientation to try and get some people, get, get that all squared away so you don't have to worry about getting signed up for your classes if you're gonna be coming in a little bit late. Um, but again, just keep us in the loop with what you're doing and we're really gonna work with everyone. We know this is 
challenging for everyone, but um, one of the great things I think about the University of Finley is we have the ability to be flexible and turn things on a dime. You can see the team here. These are the people you're working with as you're trying to help your students. Uh, that's one reason we're able to process applications quickly is because Suzanne does them. One of the reasons that with immigration questions, you can get answers right away and can get your your um, I-20s to get all squared away because Debbie does them. And you know we're all sitting here in the same space. So um, this is something that we're really, we really want you to stay in contact with us and we're gonna work with you as best we can. Um, good question. Toto, this one I think is good for you. What academic background required to apply for the Masters of Science and Applied Security and Analytics? Okay. Um, so for the Master of Science and Applied Security and Analytics, um, the basic GPA requirement is a 3.0 GPA. So if your student has, for example, a 2.95, we will still consider them. The, the University of Finley, we look at all students on an individual basis, case by case. So even if the GPA is a little lower, it's still fine. Um, we do require for that program recommendation letters. Every student has to have three recommendation letters, ideally by professors or supervisors from the past, and also a statement of purpose, which where the student states why they really want to go into this program and what their goals are after they're done with the program. Good. Uh, for undergraduate admissions, do you accept, ooh, I don't know if I know, Suzanne, do you know what this one is? Yep, we do sure do accept oh. the O level and the A level um, documents for undergraduate admission consideration. Yes, we do. That's the British um, system for, for education, yes. Yes, this is why Suzanne is an expert at what she does and <laughs> I am not an expert in that area. <laughs> um, email ID for sending scanned documents. We would prefer that you upload the documents to the students' applications. Um, and you know, just where, where you fill out the application, you can go right back on there and upload the documents. If you have a single document or something that you can't get uploaded, you can send it to my email address. And that's srecker, like my last name, at finley.edu. Good. Uh, this is a good question. After the master's, what is the ratio of people, those who get a job from the university? Um, I don't know if that is something that we have tracked officially. Um, I can tell you that Toto has a master's degree from the university and is and is working here in a national admissions office. So that's not a data point that we actually track, but something that I'm thinking we should start tracking. So I do appreciate the question. I'm sorry I can't be more specific with my answer. Um, okay, another question. How many backlogs can you consider for graduate admission? We don't really have um, a number for that. Um, we do consider them when making the admission decision, but there's really not a number that we go by. Okay. I have a, yes, and this presentation um, will be automatically sent to everyone that's on here. And then if you, and if you have people that signed up that weren't able to join us because of time zone, they'll automatically get a copy of the presentation. Um, but I will have it and send it out as well, just to make sure everyone has it. I do encourage you to share it with with your potential students or with your other recruiting partners. Um, on-campus placements is another question. Do we have on-campus placements? Tony, you wanna to answer that one as far as on-campus jobs? So we have many opportunities for students to work on campus. Um, you can be a GA here in our office, actually, an SA or a GA, so a graduate assistant or a student assistant. Um, you can work in one of our dining halls. You can work in our library. You can be a lifeguard. I know that's what Toto did. He kind of did a lot of things throughout campus. Um, so there are a lot of great opportunities for students to have employment while they are here on campus um, going to school. And students can work about, they can work 20 hours a week during regular school time, regular classes and session, or if it's on the major breaks or over like summer break right now, they can work up to 29 hours a week. And there, there are always many on campus jobs for students to have. Um, okay, do you need an individual mark sheets to evaluate the application? Yes, we absolutely need individual mark sheets. So make sure that you upload all those and you need to make sure that they're all included, even if they've um, flunked some classes, we need to have that also. If they failed the class, we need to know that also. Okay. Another question, academic background to apply for the Master's of Science in Environmental Safety and Health Management Program. Toto, I'm gonna let you answer this one again. 
It's very similar to all the other programs. So for most of our master programs, the GPA requirement goes from 2.5 up to 3.0. So if you have students who are above 3.0, you don't have to really worry about the GPA requirement. Um, some programs require recommendation letters, some don't. Environmental science, um, they don't require um, they don't require them. And for the GPA, it's a 3.0. And the GRE is not required, but if the student does take them, they might be able to waive an additional course that the student might have to take when they come to Finley as a prerequisite. Good. Here's a great question. What about career fairs? The university, that's a great question. I don't think I've had that one before. Um, the university absolutely has career fairs for our students. We have a a strong uh, career office, career center office where students can go to to get help with developing their resume. Um, we'll have uh, employers come to campus and do career fairs, I think it's twice a, year, twice a year, once in the fall, once in the spring if they do them. That office also helps students with their job placement and getting internships and with interviewing skills and all those things. And another thing I always like to talk about for our international students, we do have a language um, language learning center. So if English is not their first language or um, they're struggling with the culture, that sort of thing, we do have a center specifically set up for, for our inter international students to help them with their language, with paper writing, with study skills, that sort of thing. And this is outside of our English, our IELP program, outside of our English language program. Anyone can go use the center, have a free tutoring help whenever they need it at that center. Um, Okay, how long does it take to get an answer after submitting application and documents? Suzanne? As long as all the documents are there that we require for an admission decision, we can have it done in 24 to 48 hours. Um, after I process, do the evaluation of the application, I send it off to the programs. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay there with a couple of the programs, but typically within 48 hours, I can have an admission decision for you. Very good. Um, here is a great question. Do you have any idea regarding interview appointments at the Embassy of Nepal for fall intake? I don't. I have not heard um, one way or another about that. Have, had Toto or Tony, have you guys heard anything from your folks? No, I'm sorry. That is something I want to try and see if we can get a line of sight on when some of these embassies are going to be opening for, for visa appointments. I, I wish I had an answer for that one for you. Um, do we have summer intakes for international students? Right now, the summer intake we have is for the um, IELP program, our English language program. So if you've got students that are interested in that, they can start this summer, start here at the end of May. And again, that one's available online this year, um, but we don't have it for the rest of graduate programs this year. Um, we would like to next year, but we're gonna have to see what COVID-19 does with everything being online this summer. Um, we, just, we just weren't able to do that for our students. That is the last question I have in the Q&A, unless, if, does anybody have any additional questions? This has been a great discussion. I know I've kept you here just about an hour and I appreciate everyone's time. Um, anything else before we go? We certainly, you know, one thing, we certainly appreciate everything that our recruiting partners do for us. Um, we could not do this without you guys. I know um, that it's tough for you guys too. I know you guys are all working from home and your worlds change very quickly, just like ours did. And I do certainly appreciate that everyone is continuing to work with us and work to do your best to send students. And we will certainly work to do our best to support you in anything that we can. Um, so do reach out to me. One thing that um, we do work to do is I've got some recruiting partners that if you need help with marketing or that sort of support, let me know. I'm happy to, to see what we can partner on for that sort of thing. I know, I know this is a tough time for all of us and we, I'm happy to be here to help support you guys as best as we can. We, we need you guys and we appreciate everything you do for us. Um, oh, we've got a couple more questions that have come in. Yes, I'll, yes, Doug, I'll be able to send a video of the session, no problem at all. Um, do you accept applications from non-computing backgrounds to the Masters of Applied Security Analytics? Toto, you want to take that one? Yeah, we sure do. We have many students who actually apply for this program without a background in anything computer science related. Uh, one good example is our GA in our office, Mahita, who is from India also. And she graduated um, from her university in India with a business degree. And she came to Finland and decided to pursue her Masters in Computer Science. And the good thing about this is that she could right away start with the program, but alongside with the program, she had to take 
a few additional classes just to teach her the basic skills of computer programming and stuff. So if you even have a student who comes from a medical background even, that's no problem at all. They can start with the analytics program, but just have a few additional classes to get them caught up to their classmates. Good. Um, this is a great question. What if international students enroll for online classes and later they have an issue with getting visa approvals? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out with visa approvals, but I can tell you that if that's the case and they're having problems with visa approvals, they can take the whole program online. So enrolling and doing the online classes would not be a waste because even if some, they have a challenge getting their visa or it takes, they couldn't come till next fall, they can, or God forbid they could, they don't ever get their visa. They'd be able to do the whole program just as it is here in the United States online. Um, of course, they don't get that experience of coming to the United States and, and the cultural experience that is so important part of that, but they would still be able to get the full degree and have a degree from an American university and have that full program um, staying in their home country taking it. So I hope that helps answer a little bit. Okay, friends, we are right up against our time, but thank you so much for your time and attention. And again, please reach out to us. All of you have my email. I think you have Suzanne's, you should have Debbie's, um, your Toto or Tony, you'd hear from them or your students hear from them. Um, we are here and I hope everyone's families are happy and healthy and safe. So with that said, take care and thank you for all you do for the University of Finley. Bye-bye.